Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the season finale of Season 1 of Refugee to Industrial Regent. And I'm starting off with a time lapse in which I build my new Stage 4 Residential District. Uh, you can see the Stage 3 Residential District, well, the regular houses, uh, off on the right there. Uh, those houses will be staying. The Elder's House uh, on the corner there will have to come down. It is in the way. And you can see me disassembling it now. Uh, mostly to make way for sorting out the rest of the floor for the houses. And I should warn you, this is probably the most heavily accelerated time lapse I've done to date. This is about seven and a half hours of work compressed into give or take eight minutes of footage that you will see. It's a crazy compression ratio, and you can see me working on the dining rooms there, the tables and chairs. Uh, for some reason, the tables in the elder's house on the top right are not visible. Uh, the eight on the left are normal houses, and they will end up being two stories tall. The four on the right, uh, that are sideways relative to the other eight, uh, will be elder's houses. And those will be three stories tall to allow for an extra room uh, dedicated to their respective, well, I call them elders' houses, but really they're not elders anymore. They're ministers uh, from now on, and they all have their respective portfolios. But at any rate, I've got the kitchens, living rooms, and studies done for the uh, regular houses. The elders' houses have kitchens and studies on the first floor. The living room will be on the second floor. And here I am building the stairways up, followed by the walls. It, it does take a, a fair bit of time to build up the walls and then lay out the uh, second floor. Or at least start the layout of the second floor. It's also pretty expensive in terms of materials. The... Uh, uh, smooth white stone that I used for the walls, and I only used it for the bottom two floors. The uh, third floor and up, I did not use it at all. Um, I'm pretty sure I used more than a barrel, 64 stacks minimum, probably 72, maybe even 80 stacks. I forget exactly, but it was a lot, and it and it was more than I actually had sugar. And I didn't actually have enough sugar to make enough white stone to finish it off completely. And you will see some positives as I go back for more uh, sugar cane uh, to make more sugar to make more of that smooth white stone. At least early on until I get to that third floor. Uh, and here I am nearly finished with the first floor. And yes, there was some time underneath where I was, well, first off sorting out the awnings. For the regular houses. And now to lay out the floor pattern for the second floor. And like I said, for the eight regular houses on the left, the second floor is the end of the story. The rest of the rooms uh, required are on the second floor. The other's housing cannot fit all of its rooms on the second floor. So it they will have a third floor. And here I am laying down the master bedroom. Yes, beds, tables, and chests, ultimately. And here I'm also laying down ch child's bedrooms. Uh, beds, uh, chests, tables, and desks. Uh, there are also are the living rooms for the elders' houses. The uh, work rooms for the uh, regular houses. And at this point, the rooms are complete. The uh, fourth room in the regular houses will be left... Uh, empty for the time being. Uh, I will have to add an additional room, but that leaves me with the perfect space for it. Uh, well, next stage, I will have to add an additional room to the regular houses. Uh, no word on the elders houses just yet. Uh, as far as what I'm going to do for stage 5. But it, we're at, here at the stage 4 housing, and we're building up the walls to make our way up to the uh, well, to the attic for the regular houses, which 
I should point out is not actually accessible uh, from inside the house. And for the elders houses, uh, this sets up the third floor. Uh, there's the uh, support beams for the third floor. Some more wood you know, in the attic. A couple of points where I had to fight off mobs in there, but nothing too serious. The rest of the walls, now that I have enough smooth white stone, barely, to pull it off. And of course, uh, more wood uh, ceilings for the regular houses. And finally, I can finish off the uh, floor for the third floor on the other's house. And with all of that, I've basically got the uh, regular houses done, so I'm going ahead and laying down the roof. And I'm going with a fairly straightforward pitched roof. It's not the flat roof I've been doing up until now in most of my buildings. Uh, it's not as fancy as the hospital roof, and it certainly isn't anywhere near as fancy as the uh, as one of the projects I'll get to later on this episode. But it is a little bit fancier than I've done so far. It also, I think, looks a little bit better. Um, mind you, you're really seeing it from above, almost from above here. It's not too bad, but from below it looks even better. And here I am, working on the third floor of the Elder's Houses. Uh, the first room will be a workroom for each elder. And then the second room is going to be dedicated to each elder's uh, specialization. And unfortunately, I cannot remember which is which. I think the first one might have been mining, where I just placed a bunch of ores in there. The second one was definitely magic. You can see the Thumbcraft tables. And you might have barely... Uh, caught a glimpse of the uh, floating lamp. The third one was for agriculture. You could see the uh, farm field, the small, very small farm field in there. And, oh wait, no, number four is mining, which means number one is technology. Number four had the ores, number one had pistons. Sorry, my, my memory is not the greatest. And uh, well, given how much I had to accelerate this, like I said, seven and a half hours of work, uh, compressed into an eight-minute time lapse. Uh, but at any rate, here are the four roofs. They don't take nearly as long to finish up. And with the roofs done, we're off to the second time lapse, which is the completion of the northern wall of Byzantium. And yes, I did have to fight off a few mobs uh, in the beginning. Uh, mostly zombies. There were a couple of creepers. I think there might have been one or two creepers. I forget the exact number. <sighs> that was a bit of a rigmarole. But at any rate, uh, we've got the tower, which I realized I had placed one block too far out. Uh, but here is the wall itself. The uh, next pair of layers, which is not too bad. Uh, the interior, of course, because I don't want the inside of the wall to be a mob trap. And now we've got it done as far as the next tower. Remember, that is the north gate that I finished uh, more than a few episodes ago. I forget exactly what episode it was that I completed that gate. And here I am running back to the storehouse, gathering more materials, probably the cobblestone steps and slabs that I need for the topping of the wall. And there, of course, is the front piece. And I did have to cut down, I think, one or two trees uh, to make way for the wall. And yes, that one was me just uh, stupidly jumping off the wall. Now, I'd initially placed... Uh, the wall on that tower before realizing I needed to place the overhang first so that I could get in the right place. Now I've got the uh, next step of the walls up so that I can place the crenellation. I'm also opting to light up the wall at this point 
Uh, this section, of course, is on camera. There are other sections that will be off camera. Most of the existing wall I actually lit up off camera. And actually, I think I might be doing that at this point here, just lighting up the rest of the wall, making sure everything's in order. And now I return to work on this tower, which is going to be a small, simple watchtower. Nothing too fancy. Except for the fact that I didn't place my cameraman high enough. Let's fix that, shall we? <laughs> At any rate, the walls and the crenellations. And the supports for the crenellations. And now let's go ahead and turn our attention to the northeastern section of the Great Wall of Byzantium. And you can just barely make out me laying down the foundation for the northeastern Great Tower. And yes, there are a few points in this construction where I ran back to my storehouse to grab additional resources. Uh, cobblestone, cobblestone stairs, cobblestone slabs, uh, things of that nature. I may also have found myself short of uh, ladders, of all things. But at any rate, here we are getting the uh, wall up a little bit closer to the height I want. Uh, as well as the foundation of that tower. Now I'm not sure I quite have the height I want here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't recall what layer this is. And the angle of the camera doesn't actually give me a good point of view on this. Uh, but at any point, at any rate, I do build a temporary staircase uh, where the wall ultimately is going to be. And that serves principally to make sure I can get up and down, at least until I get that much finished. Alright, now that's the height I'm looking for from my wall. So I go ahead and lay down the uh, overhang, the uh, cobblestone stair overhang. Uh, the second tier of that tower. And I also start building up the rest of the wall, just for the sake of completing it. Uh, you can also see me fixing the overhang where my tower ultimately ends up being, well, the next uh, watchtower. And I built it there just to sort of be a little bit of a transition between the relatively flat area uh, in front of it, uh, to its west rather, and the uh, hillier terrain to its east. At any rate, I also go ahead and lay a wooden floor there. I uh, haven't made use of it yet, uh, and will not this stage, but useful to have that floor in the watchtower. So there I am with the crenellations, and that slabbing wishes almost entirely to make sure that mobs do not spawn. Uh, on the wall I just worked on as I go back to the storehouse yet again and grab more materials. And now here I am building up the northeastern tower. All right, you can see me laying down the second floor, working my way back up, and there is the top of the tower. You can see me laying the overhang and the crenellation. And of course a bit of lighting. Because eh, lighting's not uh, too bad a deal at the top of the tower. Alright, and now to finish the rest of the wall. And I'm starting with that eastern section because it's going to be obscured by the uh, next tower, the uh, last tower that I'll be building. And there we go. More walls. And now I lay down its overhang and back wall and the floor. And now I actually get to work on the next tower which, like I said, is the last tower we'll be building. Get its uh, wall overhang sorted out. 
run back to the storehouse and grab more materials. I seem to do that quite a bit, but then again, this is not a small project, and it's probably not realistic to expect me to carry everything on me that I would need to pull it off. But at any rate, here is the tower, the overhang, the crenellations, the tops of the crenellations. Don't want any mods to spawn there. A torch on the uh, bottom level of the tower, so that mobs don't spawn there. Another run back to the storehouse to grab additional resources. And now to finish up the Great Wall of Byzantium. At least as of stage 4. Yes, here's a scary thought. I don't know that I've given myself enough space to complete stage 5. I know I have enough for stage 4. Don't know that I quite have enough for stage 5. But at any rate, completing the flooring and the back wall completes the Great Wall of Byzantium. And now on to my third time-lapse project, which is my research lab. Now, it will not be furnished this stage, uh, nor do I consider furnishing it to be a requirement to complete the stage. It is, in my opinion, uh, more important to have the space available for future use. And by future use, I mean next stage. At any rate, here is the floor for the left section, uh, dug up and laid out. Set up the lighting, and for this left section, I go ahead and start laying out the support columns for the roof. And I think next to, well, actually this is even going to be a fancier roof than the hospital. And you'll recall how fancy that hospital roof was. Had had a nice dome in the front. As much as I like the look of the hospital, I think I ultimately end up liking the look of the roof of this uh, research lab even better. Now, here I am laying down the floorboard. And I'm using uh, chiseled stone bricks for this. Well, not chiseled stone bricks, but... Uh, stone bricks modified through the chisel mod for the floorboards rather than the limestone I would normally use simply because pretty much all but run out of limestone. I have maybe a couple of stacks left, no more. Uh, it wouldn't have been enough for this project. So here I am laying out the bottom section of the walls. Uh, and, and yes, that was me pulling up a circle chart so that I had so that I could keep track of the circles I was going to build here. Yeah, it, it is a slightly complicated affair, this uh, oval uh, layout. And, of course, I got the first two parts done. Now, here is uh, segment three of the wall. And we go now to uh, seg segment four. And we also start to make our way towards segment five. And finally, segment six. And then we get closer to the top of the wall. And as the circles get smaller, it takes less and less time to build them. And now, at this point, I can complete the roof of the left section. I do have to... Uh, well, first off, run back to the storehouse and grab more stone. Uh, I remember one of the rules of cool I set for Sage 4 was that I was going to allow myself automatic cobblestone and smooth stone generation through thermal expansion uh, and insignious extruders. Uh, this is the sort of project that makes me really grateful I did that. But as you can see, I'm now taking care of these staircases that were uh, letting me up onto that roof. Which is basically an indication that the roof is finished uh, of this section of my research lab. Now, I do go ahead and lay down a small part of the floor in the middle section before making my way back over to the right-hand side uh, to work on it. And, of course, I clear out the floor much the same way as I cleared out the floor on the left. Uh, the order of operations may have been slightly different, but 
Uh, not dramatically so. I'm not too worried about it. But there's the edging, which is small white stone bricks. I went with white to ensure maximum contrast with the uh, darker stone on the walls. And the jungle wood floor, uh, it's just a matter of it being the wood I had the most of by a not inconsiderable margin. Now, unlike the left tower, I've opted to build the right tower layer by layer. Uh, building up the uh, staircase as I go so I can get up to the top of it. Unlike with the left tower, I only elected to build one staircase. Now, here is the second tier of the roof. And I start off with the upper sections before moving on to the right. Then the bottom right. And yes, that was an Ars Magica meteor. It actually landed just inside of... Uh, well, no, not just inside, right outside the Colosseum, or not Colosseum, Hippodrome, uh, almost directly under my cameraman, believe it or not. But there's the uh, third segment of this wall on the right side, uh, and it's uh, support walls. Now, one of the advantages I had on the right was that I have the uh, circles on the left that I can use as a reference. Of course, that doesn't help the fact that I have to go back to the storehouse to grab more cobble or smooth stone from time to time. But at any rate, here is the bottom left section. Now I can go up to the next tier and get closer to the very top of the structure. And there are my vertical supports, which I then connect up uh, at the roof line. And that completes that roof. Uh, this is also the point at which I check to make sure that the interior of that is good. Uh, and here I am working on the uh, center area, the edging. And then the center, incidentally, is, well, it's eventually going to be an elevator shaft. But for now, it's, well, it's dead space at the moment. But here I am laying down the floor. And getting the start of the wall for that middle section. And with a temporary staircase installed, I can actually start the process of uh, putting the walls and roof on this middle section. And I start by establishing the box at the top of what is currently the elevator shaft. Uh, as well as its rounded uh, walls. Yes, it is another run back to the storehouse before I go ahead and uh, grab additional materials. I opt for uh, smooth stone slabs over the two entrances, uh, mostly so that the tops of the entrances will be well defined. And now I work my way on the right side, uh, this uh, second sector on the right. Before moving on to the second sector on the left, you can see I go slightly... Uh, larger than that, inter than that intersection simply because uh, it's a little bit wider and I'm going with a uh, uh, cylindrical uh, roof for that part. The result is effectively a saddle and I think it gives this building just that right effect for the time being and with that the research lab is finished. <laughs> Alright, I am back here at I've gone ahead and gone to Fort Turbanos. I've also gone ahead and laid down a chest next to a crafting station. I will uh, need it. Alright. I've also got... And what this chest is mostly going to do is allow me to actually uh, batch craft a bunch of stuff. Uh, which will be useful. I've gone ahead and laid down the swords. I've also gone ahead and replaced the signs. Uh, they had previously said the Karchos, but uh, looking back at my theme details, I, I realized that the Karchos is actually the term for the commander of the group, not the group itself. The name for the group is Contubernian. So I went ahead and replaced the signs uh, to correct that. I also went ahead and put a sign on the mess hall. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the swords. 
And I think I'm going to have nine swordsmen and one archer per Comtebernian, uh, at least in the regular forces. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down my first nine swords here in the first infantry. Now the support will have the same arms composition as my infantry units, at least for the time being. Um, later, I mean, support units are unlikely to get much more heavily armored, or heavily armed rather. I mean, I'll probably be upgrading the regular Contabernia uh, to uh, diamond uh, weapons before I upgrade support Contabernia uh, to iron. And perhaps most importantly, I'm also going to, uh, you know, at this moment I've got uh, nine swordsmen, one archer per, contu per combat Contubernian. Uh Later on I'll have dedicated archery Contubernia. And they will have uh, bows only, and then the bows will be taken away from the infantry Contubernia. Alright, let's go ahead and place the last of these swords up. So I can get this bit sorted out. And get back to my uh, crafting station. And there we go. So that's all the swords. Now, next up bows. Remember, I did say I wanted four ar one archer per contubernian. So I'm going to go ahead and craft up four bows. Uh, let's see, a stack of sticks, uh, flint and feathers. Is it vertical? It is. Okay. So it looks like each archer is going to get a stack of bows. Or not a stack of bows. A bow and a stack of arrows. A uh, bit of a dirt moment on my part, and I do apologize for that. Uh, I think my mind got a little bit behind my mouth there. Anyway, that is three, and now into the support, Contubernian. And that's the weapons for our regular army. Now, all we need is armor armor. Uh, fortunately, I'm not in that bad a shape in terms of wood. I don't have very much, um, oh, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, my memory's leather, 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 that's what it was called, leather, I have nowhere near enough leather uh, to equip an army, but I do have enough wood to give everybody a wooden chest plate, so I'll do it two Contubernia at a time, well, Contubernia slash proposed Contubernia, uh, admittedly, this does mean that I probably won't be doing much here at Fort Sarbanos next stage. And that's okay with me. Because it's kind of difficult to get to at this point. Alright, we're halfway through the second Contubernian. And there we go. And now I can make my way back here, craft the rest of it, and give chest plates to the other two Contubernia. Wait, did I hit this one already? Hmm, I must have. So does that mean it's these two I haven't hit yet? Yeah, it's these two. Okay. The ones that don't yet actually exist. Uh, I'm just equipping them, I guess, just to be a stage ahead of myself. And I'm okay with that. I hope nobody objects. <laughs> uh, 
All right, 10 more. God, why did I try to go into that bed? <laughs> uh, just a simple misclick, I'm sorry to say. All right. And there's the chest plates. Next up are the... Uh, uh, the uh, pants. Let's go ahead and get my four going. There's five, and six, and seven. And once again, pants for everybody. Uh, or rather, pants for two Conte Barony at the moment. Again, I'm doing this two Conte Barony at, the t at a time because that's all the storage space I've really got at the moment. So let's go ahead and get our second Contubernian. Well, our second future Contubernian. Uh, pantsed up. There we go. Now I can go ahead and craft the rest of these leggings. Equip the last two Contubernia with pants. Ah. <sighs> And I think this is only half of the armor. <sighs> kind of anticlimactic. Kind of anticlimactic for a finale, I dare say. But unfortunately, necessary. You know, it's not like my soldiers are going to be uh, all that effective without any sort of armament. Uh, anyway, there's all the pants sorted out. So, next up is the helmet. So, let's see. Three, four, five. And like the others, I'm going to be equipping these two Contubernia at a time. And this is probably the only stage at which I will be uh, doing this on camera. And my army is not quite big enough uh, to make it non-viable. Although I'm sorry to say, it's not that far off. <laughs> uh, four Contubernia, uh, 40 soldiers, 40 sets of armor, quite a bit. Yeah, future stages I will be taking on this task off camera. <sighs> it is nice of Tinker's Construct to add wooden armor. <sighs> it would have really extended the stage if I had had to provide leather for all of these soldiers. Mind you, next stage I'll likely have a better source of leather. Although I think I probably will skip straight from wood to iron. Uh, and only when I have enough iron to actually outfit uh, a sufficient portion of my army. All right. Let's see here. All right, let's go ahead and get our last piece sorted out, which is the boots. Particularly important, given that we're in a bit of a uh, swamp-type biome here. And, no, I still haven't built the roads to the dock. Uh, I am not going to consider it a stage requirement. Maybe I should, but I won't. I'm also going to go ahead and make sure uh, these are organized properly. This is probably my best opportunity as I put in the boots. go. There's 15. There's 16.
And two more to go before I go back to the uh, crafting table and grab the rest of the boots. Like so. Equip the rest of the Contibernia. That's Contibernian uh, number one. Uh, well, three if you count the uh, two uh, non-designated Contibernia, which have neither names nor manpower at this point in time. Even if they do have beds and uh, full sets of equipment. All right. Time for me to clean up here in uh, Fort Sarbanos. Grab my uh, crafting table and chest. Crafting station, rather. Make my way back to my boat. Uh, and I shall return once I get back to Byzantium and I'm ready for the next part. All right. I'm here at the corner tower of my wall uh, for... One of the last buildings required, uh, this tower is going to double as my militia headquarters, uh, slash armory. Well, town guard, really, headquarters. Uh, I'm a bit short, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is, let me think here. So I can go ahead and lay... Uh, how exactly do I want to lay these beds? I mean, I don't want to block the uh, middle of the room off. Let me check the lighting real quick. Uh-oh. All the corners. But the beds should fix that. And I realize I am one short. But oh well. Alright, let's next bring out the chests. I can go ahead and put the chest for this bed over here. Even though the bed's not there to be placed yet. Uh, and then, ah, let's see here. Two, three, four, six, seven. So they're going to get a sword a bow, stack of arrows, and a full set of, of wooden armor per chest. These are, after all, the town guards. And it is important that they have the equipment they need to fight off any mobs that may uh, decide to get a little bit antsy. Here's four of six. Five of six will go in here without a bed. I'll have to get that bed taken care of shortly. Uh, did somebody not get a stack of arrows? Because he shouldn't have a stack of arrows left over. He's got arrows? He does not. Okay, so I did miss one stack of arrows. All right, and now on the second floor, I'm actually going to go ahead and move the torches up onto the wall here. There we go. And now the last items out of here will basically be the desk for the guard commander. I don't think I wanted to put that like that. I think I actually wanted to put that the other way around. Get the X. There we go. Et voila. Now the, com now the commander has a place to sit, uh, but no real place to sleep. Actually, I believe the commander of the uh, town guard sleeps with the uh, rest of the officers in the barracks at the militia headquarters. 
Uh, but uh, they will still need. But he will still need uh, some fancier equipment than what his guardsmen have. That's going to mean. A full suit of iron armor, an iron sword. Might as well grab a stack of arrows out of there that I've collected off skeletons rather than making another stack and worrying about the materials for it. Uh, at any rate, start with the bow. Grab myself a sword, chest plate. The rest of the armor. I also need an additional chest. And two extra beds. So I'll go ahead and grab the materials for the beds. Craft them up. And I should be able to finish off the Town Guard Headquarters. As soon as I make my way over to that tower. Oh yeah, I also went ahead and removed the houses that were here. Uh, the houses uh, that I built in the time lapse earlier this episode uh, will replace all of these. As well as the Stage 2 Elder's House that was over there and in the way of my boulevard. Uh, yeah, I kind of opted to uh, place the boulevard and destroy the former elder's house. Alright, let's make our way up onto the wall. It is a little bit of a trek uh, to the town guard headquarters. Uh, there will be some ideas for next stage uh, that might make certain uh, aspects of getting around Byzantium a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and set the bed back here, and then I will go ahead and give him all of his uh, armor and equipment in that chest there. And finally, bed there. I'm actually, now that I think about it, it's probably going to be safer if I do the lighting on this floor the same way as I did the lighting upstairs rather than having the light space around the central column. But at any rate, uh, this is the uh, town guard headquarters complete. And with that, most of the major requirements, I'm going to go ahead, go off camera, check uh, the rest of the requirements, make sure I'm in order on everything else. Uh, one last thing, well, a couple last things I will need to do before I end the episode, so I shall return. All right, I just checked, and... Everything is pretty much in order in terms of the official stage requirements. Uh, so I just got a, a very small number of loose ends I need to fill out, uh, to sort out. Uh, first off, uh, Theophilus Nepus, uh, the elder that uh, used to hold this office, is going to seal his office to me. All right, so I'll go ahead and put my name on the sign here. Now, the office next to it is uh, Leo Ducas' office. He will keep his office, but he'll get his new title. Minister of Agriculture. Leo Ducas. This was my office, which will now go to to a uh, other Nepos, who is now, if I could spell it properly, my Minister of Technology. And then there's two more offices that have yet to be assigned. The first one is for my. Minister of Mining, a.k.a. the Mining Guild Leader. Uh, and the name I've decided on, 
And this name is also on his office at the Mining Guild headquarters. Manuel? Eugenicus. I'm pretty sure this is a hard G. And finally, uh, one more minister. Minister of Magic. Heraclius Callistus. Now, that's the town hall sorted out. I will go ahead and show you the single modification I made uh, to the military headquarters. As soon as I make my way over there, it looks a little bit different with those houses gone. At any rate, now this conference room over here remains the same. Uh, no point in changing it at this point. I will check the armory. I'm pretty sure I'm good on weapons. I'm probably less good, well, swords at least, a little bit less good on armor, uh, but that's easy to rectify. Um, I've actually got, I think, two Contubernians, so I need two sets of armor for their Decartroid. So that's 48 iron. I will not bother with bows. For them, they will carry swords only. So let's go ahead, get two iron chest plates. And there we go. Now I can put this up uh, for the armor uh, in the armory. Remember, the uh, uh, Karchos that is in charge of the town guard uh, has his own uh, set of armor at the town guard headquarters. But at any rate, let's go ahead and put the armor up in there. And in here, in the planning room, you can see I've got a map. In an oak map frame of the local area. I, I admit, I think it may be a little bit too local, but I am expected to expand that uh, one step every stage. So it's probably best to leave that as is for the time being. Uh, probably sort out more of the map later on. And that's pretty much my final check before. And actually, let me go ahead and put some stuff up in my brown bag. In fact, pretty much everything that's not a backpack. We'll go in the brown bag. I'm going to make my way over to my workshop. Ah, still a wooden sword in there. Interesting. So I'm going to grab all of my wood and stone tools, at least all of the wood and stone tools I have left. Uh, make my way to my palace. I've gone ahead and replaced the wooden front door with uh, iron. And added stone pressure plates to make it a little bit easier to get in and out. Uh, further improvements will likely come in later stages, but for now that would do. I've also gone ahead and crafted a clock and placed it in iron frame. An item frame, sorry, not an iron frame. Now I will make, actually, one more thing I forgot to grab. And it's kind of important to officially complete the stage. So let me run back to my storehouse real quick to grab it. I hate to say it, but that storehouse already feels a little bit claustrophobic. Uh, don't worry, I'll likely be rebuilding and relocating it next stage anyway. But at any rate, uh, with the piece of redstone, I'm going to go ahead and make my way up to my trophy room. And I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, start moving the wooden tools around a little bit. So I have more room for my stone tools. Alright, and one last thing. 
open up the oak case. I can remove the iron because the iron village stage is finished and the redstone discovery stage has officially begun. And with that, not only is stage four complete, but season one of Refugee to Industrial Regent is also complete. I do have some setup that I need to do before I start season two. Uh, there are some updates in the mod pack. I've also got a few new mods in mind that I want to add. Uh, also want to make sure that I've got the ideal setup uh, for recording uh, going forward. Uh, proper opening for the series, you know, a few general setup things now that I've got a better sense of uh, how this is going to work. Uh, but with that, uh, let me make my way to the forum over here. And with a nice view of central Byzantium, I will leave you. Wait a minute, I just realized I forgot something. Uh, let me take care of that real quick. Actually, do I have what I need in here? For, I do not. So it looks like I put it in this chest here. Yeah, the scaffolding. I just realized I had a camera platform that uh, is somehow still there. I forgot to take it down after the time lapse. Um, I'm not going to go back and undo the uh, stage switch. Um, given that I haven't done anything with the Redstone Discovery stage yet, I'm going to call this a no harm, no foul situation. I uh, just go ahead and make my way up uh, to that platform and demolish it. Then demolish the scaffolding to get there. And then I can well and truly claim a start to stage five. Oh yeah, I might also want to go ahead and take care of that cop that uh, stone before it becomes a mob trap. Let's see, how far down can I click? There we go. All right. And now I will make my way back to where I was going to end this episode before. You can see my stage three and stage four houses there. Uh, like I said earlier, the stage two housing was demolished off camera. Uh, the stage four housing has supplanted it completely. And with that, uh, this is the end of season one of Refugee to Industrial Region. I will see you next season, everybody.